children of the night. What music they make. They're all gonna laugh at you! They're coming to get you, Barbara. What's that? I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash you with this. Yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Final Guys. Uh, I'm one of your co-hosts, Tim Meyer, joined, as always, by my buddies, Jason Brandt. Hi. Jack Campisi. Welcome. And Hunter Shea. Hello. You can call me Fisty McAnus tonight. <laughs> oh, by the way, can the viewers Lord. actually see the silly names that we put this time around? Yeah, I think so. Uh, maybe I, I hope not. Uh, I have to be careful with my names going forward. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this week we have, uh, an episode about a little movie on shutter called spiral. Um, not to be confused with a movie coming out next year, starring Chris rock about the saw franchise also called spiral. Um, but this is a delightful little movie on shutter that I thought was a pleasant surprise. And, um, I'll be interested to get your guys opinions later when we talk about it. Uh, but first let's start with the drinking words, right? Who wants to read them? Jason, why don't you read them? Ooh, yes, sir. I'm yeah. on this. Get on it. All right. If you hear any of these words come out of our filthy mouths, take a drink. Jack, your words are shoot, graffiti, and house. Hunter, yours are drugged, Canadian, and town. Mine are Amityville, shutter, and plant. And stud muffins are daughter, book, and madness. <laughs> and the bonus words are October, Malik, and Marshall. Is that right, Malik? Yeah, that looks right. Yeah. That is, yeah, that was the dude's name. Good job, well, man. Good job. Thanks. I'm, I really appreciate the vote of confidence. That's what I'm here for. Where did Stud Muffin come from? I think I I said Stud Muffin, and then um, Sheridan just kind of ran with it, which I'm okay with. So I like it. I think they I came like from it. Sheridan's heart. I think it did, know. and I appreciate that, buddy. It does have uh, rainbows in the drinking words, so I like that too. Might yeah, be that's actually a nice addition today. Yeah. Um, all right. So do you guys have like any, um, anything you want to promote or talk about? Do we need to mention anything? I mean, you know, usual. I actually I mean, want to thank anybody who bought a copy of Misfits. So since it came out this month and is, oh, you're going to time to review it. So thank you. Well, that's me. I, I bought one. So you're welcome. Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> you would also like to apologize to all those people <laughs> yes, my deepest apologies uh you know what i'll say at the beginning this so last month was our best month ever on downloads and views and this month we have beat it by about another 25 percent, i think so Damn. thank you to all the new listeners oh wow we appreciate it that is quite uh a jump up 25 percent. that's nothing to uh to sneeze at it's the stud muffin it, effect. So it's funny it, because I've been jump. reading that podcasts in general have been down 25% on average. Ours were down 30, 40% throughout the we whole have summer. Four listeners and you get up to like eight. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the Ross Perot uh, infomercial about Bill Clinton going, he doubled the, uh, the economy. He had one penny, then he finished with two. He still got two pennies. The, the math actually checks out because, I mean, we probably had three listeners. And then when I started, Chad Lutsky started uh, watching pretty consistently. So that's 25% right there. So. Yeah, you're right. The yeah, Lutsky factor. We, we, uh, uh, no. <laughs> Don't worry. I've got words with Lutsky coming up here. So oh, I'll, I'll I'm excited. <laughs> so uh, before we get into those words, Jack, do you have any uh, any hard news you want to lay on us? Oh, do I have news? <laughs> you have a printed page this time? I do. All right. Do you want to overreact to it? Oh my God! You printed <laughs> something out. <laughs> Do you save them in a binder? You yeah, say it does. like Al Michaels. Oh my God! He printed something out. <laughs> oh. So earlier this week, it was leaked that the Craft reboot might be being released around Halloween. That was like yesterday, and then today they released the trailer and confirmed that the Craft Legacy will be released, I think it's going to be on the 28th. The thing I have says the 27th, but I think if you watch the trailer, which hit today, 
it's uh, the 28th. But anyway, right before Halloween, mm. I wasn't crazy about the trailer. <laughs> Got Liv Tyler and David Duchovny. And really? it looks like it is a continuation of the movie. There's a few hints in there that the, the Kraft original movie has happened. But it has a very CW charmed look to it. Oh, well, that is your, tar your target audience, I think, yeah. with that. So it's funny. I haven't watched The Craft in I mean, a long time, but now I have the Blu-ray because I bought a copy for my niece for her birthday, which I'm trying to introduce her to horror. And they sent two. And yeah. I'm like, hmm, I'll take that one. So that's going to be a horror Tober watch. Nice. Yeah, I haven't it's seen not it a bad movie. Is it going to be in theaters or just VOD? VOD. Even better. Really? They're not going to release in theaters at all. That's interesting. That feels like a movie that they could squeeze a couple bucks out of. Yeah, well, the way theaters are now, though, they're probably going to make a mint off this off of VOD because everybody's just dying for something. And right before Halloween, unlike what was it? What's the movie? Dr. Sleep that waited till after Halloween. Mm. Yeah. Good move. Out. That was so stupid. <laughs> Didn't Overlord what? do that, too? Yes. They probably didn't want to go up against whatever actually was coming out that weekend. Probably would be my guess. Oof. I don't remember if there was anything good. I was so blown away by Overlord. I don't remember what else came out. that. Oh, Jason, yeah. you and Hunter. I was listening to some podcast and they Overlord came up and the two guys out of pockets both did not like that movie at all. Hmm. And I was like, I wanted to jump through the friggin. How can you not like that movie even a little bit? Like, I didn't love the movie, but it's entertaining as fuck. Like, I love yeah. It's just a eye candy. So delete that podcast. Yes. From your <laughs> <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> I, I said, oh, if we ever get these guys on. Fuck them. They're not coming on here. No. That's why we keep adding people onto this show. So that way we will have strength in numbers. We will kick the ass of anyone who goes against us. That's right. We are legion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to save the second thing, actually, for the last thing. Shutter has got a whole bunch of stuff coming on for Halloween, but I just wanted to point out two things. First of all, Joe Bob's Halloween Hideaway is on October 23rd at 9 p.m. Our host and drive-in movie expert Joe Bob has left the trailer park behind in favor of a more remote retreat. He's still ready to serve up a double feature of films handpicked for your Halloween enjoyment, but he doesn't say what they're going to be. But I would imagine we'll have our little love fest that night and check out. It'll oh, be yeah. like this, only with the TV on. Yes. <laughs> Which night is it again? It is on October 23rd. Okay. I, was gonna say, I, a... I will be there. Yeah. Awesome. October 23rd, huh? Nice. Then the other interesting one was that there's going to be a creep show Halloween special, and it's going to be animated with two uh, features. One that's going to have Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, I can't know if I can find the, um, the name of it. And the other one, you know who Joey King is? She's this young actress. She was in the, something called the Kissing Booth on the, yeah, the Kissing Booth on Netflix. She's like an up and coming, um, star. But they're going to okay. be in two different, um, two different stories. So new creep show for that's on October twenty sixth. And I, I'm actually looking forward to that. That's that'll be animated cool. creep show. Well, now where is that going to be? Same thing. Shutter. Shutter. Mm. They're, they're showing a whole bunch of stuff. These were the two that jumped out at me. That I was like, ooh, I want to. I That's like cool. That. Yeah. I did not watch the show that came out last year. I, I enjoyed forgot. it. I enjoyed it. It's definitely worth watching. I mean, the, like any anthology, you're going to have like your, your hit and miss stories. Yeah. But um, overall, I, I really enjoyed it. I wanted to. I love Creepshow. I just, I was watching something else. And by the time I finished that, I completely forgot Creepshow had come out. and I never <laughs> got to it. And now you're watching Amityville movies. Yeah, yeah, now I'm in the good choice, seventh buddy. circle of hell. Sometimes you got to look at your life choices. <laughs> well, it's not the seventh circle of hell razor. Think of that. Every time you want to kill yourself. <laughs> God damn. I'm not looking forward to that. All right. The best news. Anybody here a fan of Hocus Pocus? Yeah. Yeah. Come muck, come muck, baby. No. Is anybody here a fan of Carvel ice cream? Yeah, sure. I grew mean, up with it down the block for me. Hey, Krabby McBrant, are you? Do you like anything? I see you no. sitting there with a scowl on no. your face. I have no Ooh, idea what you're even talking about. Cocktail I hate and an IPA flavor. I hate ice cream, man. And gargamel. Yeah. 
we didn't Carvel. have ice up in the mountains. <laughs> Carvel is going to have for 31 nights of Halloween a hocus pocus shake. The magical hand spun concoction is made of Oreo cookie pieces, vanilla soft serve topped with whipped cream, and served in a limited edition cup with uh, Sarah, Winifred, and Mary on the uh, the cup. I am going to get one of these. Boom. Hmm. I wonder Riveting. how that's going to taste. <laughs> oh my God! Look at this. Jason doesn't. If he's not interested, then we can't be. Uh, I don't even. I honestly, I think I've seen Hocus Pocus once when I was a kid. I've never watched it again. Oh. I, I only recently found out people were obsessed with it. I oh. took my daughter to a quote along at the Alamo. It was just awesome. Was it a and big hit when it came out? There. I don't remember it being a big deal. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, not, not as big as it is now. Yeah, it's definitely it's been gotten. a cult classic for a very long time. So it's just yeah. been also, oh, yeah. many nice people like ice cream a lot. So yeah, I'm I don't know like everybody. Cream. You're not a fan of ice cream? I am a fan of ice cream, of course. Okay, Jeez, I'm not that big of an asshole. So this is a shake that's going to taste like Bette Midler's sweat. <laughs> it's going to taste like <laughs> the, the, the the book well, with I, the eye. <laughs> I did that pause just so Jason <laughs> meant would go, don't! <laughs> I, was, I was waiting, like, oh, God. <laughs> Here I go. I was waiting for it, too. I'm actually disappointed you did, you pulled a punch there. I'm sorry. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I These are available for a limited time, so get to your local Carvel soon. That's all I got. No air pumps. Oh, no, no. I do have one more thing. Oh, tell us. Uh, just one more thing. If anybody cares, bloody disgusting. Is go is launching a Roku channel, a uh, horror channel, and I think believe it's free, and it's going to begin on the 29th, September 29th, and it's going to have a whole bunch of horror programming. And as I said before, I believe it is yes, launching for free on the Roku channel. So if you have a Ro I have a Roku TV, so I never really watched any of their the stuff on the actual Roku, so I might. I hope it's all the horrible movies that they give quotes to about how great they are. Mm. <laughs> Whenever I, they're one of those, if I see that they gave a great quote, I'm like, no, <laughs> that's a movie. Like even gravitas wouldn't touch. They do seem to have a lot of quotes out there. Yeah. Is that like an exchange? So they can get news or something. It's gotta be something hmm. like we're the antithesis of that. We're like, yeah, just shit on everything in the industry. Yeah. Why doesn't anyone want to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I did see something, a rumor pop up. Uh, I, I missed it last week, but apparently Friday the 13th might be starting back up finally. I saw that too. Oh, wait, like a new series? Like a new, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. Rumor is a movie. a movie. Yeah, rumor is a movie. Yeah, so. that's been going on forever. Oh, I got too tingled when I heard it. Well, so I think it was it last summer, supposedly, all the litigation finally ended. Did they finally settle that? I, I think. I mean, it's been 11 years. So I'm <laughs> hoping something finally comes out. It's kind of stupid. Yeah, because they can make a shit ton of money going forward if they just do something. Yeah. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> the game is the only thing we've had in 11 years. Which is amazing, by the way. I love that it's, game. It's a lot of fun. Um. All right. So we're done with news. Shall we get to some stuff that we watched this week? Giddy up. Let's do it. have such sights to show you all right uh let's talk about some things that we watched uh brent i know yeah. you to kick us off with your uh amityville adventure well i've got something worse than amityville to start oh disappointing but I also one of those movies so last week i finished critters and i was very happy about this and I found out Critters, a new binge, the series. <laughs> why, why, so I wasn't going to watch this because I don't want to watch a whole series of this shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. But it turns out each episode is like eight minutes. So I figured out the well, whole thing. It's like a quibby thing. Yeah, it's like 80 minutes long. I can handle it. So I went on Shutter, and it was no longer available. So eventually I had to have somebody track it down for me. Barnard. I would say thank you, but I really dislike you now. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to watch a freaking thing. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's a web series. They spent about $6 on it. 
the CG is early nineties bad. It's like Ooh. a cut above lawnmower man, like bad. That's it, awful. It's unbelievable. They were really going for the laughs in this. And to be honest, some of the humor was like, I chuckled a couple of times. There was some decent stuff in it, but my God, when it gets to the last two episodes, it just goes so far off the rails and is so ridiculous. I could not wait for this to end. <laughs> there, a woman has sex with a critter. Like that, Ooh, that I've been waiting for that. That's Everybody awesome. has. Yeah, it's just, man, I I see what they were going for. Um, I would say Critters deserves better than this, but it doesn't. It kind of just fits right in. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, if you've made it this far in Critters, if you've made it through all the movies, I, I mean, I guess you could try to track it down if it ever becomes available again. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with the rights to it, but uh, you've really convinced <sighs> me to go track this down. Yeah, I'm in. I'm yeah. trying to think of an excuse. It sounds and, amazing. Man, <laughs> I was already on a low from Critters, and this was just pretty much what I expected and why I did not want to watch it. So I want to thank everyone on Twitter for peer pressuring me into watching this. Uh, I appreciate you wasting my life, and thank you. you is that really it? Sit, you need to sit down and watch The Shining or something and just get cleanse the palate. No, you need to get on YouTube and watch Critters fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> so October is usually when I don't watch a bunch of crap. I don't know what it is. I just watch all my favorites and a couple new things here and there. But because I've agreed to this devil's pact with Lutsky to watch Amityville, <laughs> Lutsky. half that is out the window. <laughs> Your life sucks. Sad. It's the worst. I hate this show. <laughs> oh, all right. Jack, what do you got for us? Bring us up. Oh, I'll bring you up. So we were, um, we uh, all of us at some point have been a guest on the um, Cryptids, Crips, and Coffee show on YouTube. Triple C, baby. And our, uh, our show just hit, and we talk about vampires. And in it, one of the movies that came up in the conversation was Martin, which is George A. Romero's vampire movie from 1977. I haven't seen this movie in ages, so I was like, you know what? I got to pop pop in Martin. I think I watched it on YouTube. Did if you, you see haven't the Martin seen Lawrence one, Ma and Shanene was so great in this. <laughs> How y'all doing? Um, so George A. Romero will cite used to cite that this was a, his favorite movie he ever made. It is a vampire movie with no kind of magic. The the the, the Martin who is a like a, a, a guy who either is a vampire or thinks he's a vampire, but he doesn't have fangs or anything. He has to use a razor blade and he's got to hunt down his victims and, and overpower them and not get caught and things like that. Uh, and so there's a whole thing about addiction in it and everything. It is a great movie. And if you're making a list of like the 10 vampire movies you should watch, it probably should be on that list. It's a very good movie, but it's not like the kind of movie you want to watch like every year. Every, revisit it every so often to remind yourself of of it, but it's it's really good. And uh, I, only recently did I find out that Romero like said that that's the best movie he ever made. Definitely worth checking out if you're looking for something something in the vampire uh, genre to check out this this October. And that's coming from you, the vampire expert. Hmm. I've hmm, never seen that listen. movie. I have a bad DVD that's a terrible transfer of a VHS. So I got to dig it out. Yeah, when I was looking, the DVDs are expensive as hell. So YouTube, baby. <laughs> oh, it's on YouTube. Oh, all right, all right. Even better. It's not the best copy, but it's good enough. Probably better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Hunter, what you got? All right, how many of you have seen this movie? Don't torture a duckling. It's my favorite. It's on the rotation. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, where's my box set of the director's cut and? The <laughs> you know what? You could have a worse box set, by the way. This is an Italian giallo movie by a little known guy named Lucio Fulci. So this movie, because you know what? Shutter's been putting a lot of these Italian movies on. I'm like, you know what? I got to stop my whole thing where I don't like Italian horror. And I, there's, And I'm finding there's things I actually like or aspects of movies I really like. This is be effing czar, but it's Fulci. So there's this little Italian town that's a lot of hills, weird dudes in shacks bringing hookers in and people jacking off watching them with hookers. There's Sounds a, like your teenage years. Pretty much. <laughs> there's a gypsy woman 
who's doing weird black magic rituals by the highway. There's a lot going on around the highway, and I think it's kind of separating the old from the new age. But in this town, little boys keep going missing. There is a very uncomfortable scene where this city woman who has escaped to the country, I think she had some drug scandal or whatever. She's living in this boy's house. And the mother's taking care of everything. And the mother sends her him up to give her some juice. She is completely naked and basically telling him to look at her. And does he want to like, you know, have sex with her? And he's just like, and you know, the dub's got this super low voice. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, don't, don't do this right now. We're only five minutes in. Thank God it pulls back. But the whole thing is about this reporter trying to solve the, these mis the mystery of, you know, who's killing these kids. And at one point, the villagers all think it's the gypsy woman. And let me tell you, what they do to her is so graphic and vile. It's uh, that's why I'm going, oh, this is this is where Fulci's starting to get his his kind of gore style in here. It's nuts. There's weird priests and deaf mute girls there's so much weird stuff in this little town it's like it was one of those i said let me just put it on i'll probably pay attention to something else i'll play a game on my phone i just glued to the tv for the whole two hours because it was just so out there where does the term duckling come into play i don't freaking know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know uh, it was torturing my senses for a while maybe i was the duckling to be honest i've never even heard of this I saw it because there was some documentary on uh, Italian cinema, and I was like, one day frantically writing down, I was like, oh, I like that title. And then it popped up on Shutter. So I was like, let me give it a watch. And it was pretty good. Damn. Not so much horror, more like, and Giallo is not really horror. It's more like mystery detective stuff like with not good gore. Mm -hmm. No, I'm telling you, not good. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's been my experience with a lot of them as well. I prefer gelato. Yeah, I'm not, a, and I'm not a huge fan of Fulci, but I, this is actually one of my favorite things I've seen him do. Yeah, maybe I'll check that out. You're not going to check it out. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I uh, I watched a movie last week called The Barn from 2016. Um, have any of you guys heard of it? Seen it? The Barnard. <laughs> yeah, that I know. The bon. That's scary. The bon. So the bon. I, when I was getting the link for this, I saw that apparently I have it on my watch list, but I've never gotten around to it. Cool. Well, um, it's actually pretty good. I actually enjoyed it a lot. Um, I wanted something that would get me in the mood for Halloween, put me in the spirit. And um, this movie takes place on Halloween, so um, it was definitely filled that that little void. Um. But yeah, it's a it's about these kids who just um, they go around playing pranks on people during the Halloween season, um, and somehow these uh, these three creatures, those guys right there, uh, get resurrected and go on a killing Hello, spree. Jack. Nice and um, pretty cool effects. Like you could tell they didn't have a budget at all, but yeah, I was actually like really impressed with some of the um, like the special effects that they did and. Um, just like really cool, like gory stuff. And um, yeah, I was uh, I was really impressed by this this movie. I, I I might watch it like every October now. It it was so. Damn. Impressive, so that what year was that movie? Because we're watching for those who listen, we're watching um, the coming attraction for this. What year was this? Because it looks like. So it was 90s, 80s. Made, it, yeah, it was made in 2016. Oh, it, wow. It, the movie itself takes place in 1989, I think. Um, and like, it's weird cause it's shot, it's intentionally shot that way to give it that like grindhousey feel to it. Um, and some of the acting like is, I, I, at first I thought it was just really bad acting. Uh, but then when I kind of like looked at it, it was like done on purpose to make it look like really bad. Um, so it was kind of like almost like making fun of like those 80 slashers. That's but, like the director going, yeah, yeah, it was on purpose. We actually yeah, heard. it's it's hard to tell at first, but I, like it's so bad at some point where it's like they they're doing this intentionally, like it has to be. Um, so I don't know. I that aside, I I still like enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done, and um, it was just fun, like a, just a gory, fun, dirty slasher movie, and I loved it. 
I wrote it down because that trailer looks so good. Yeah, yeah. really cool. It's on yeah, Prime, like good... I think. I think it's on Prime. Is it on Prime or cool. Shutter? One of those. That looks like a good Halloween night movie. I didn't pay for it. Well, I probably did pay for it, but through one of the subscription services. That's all. You're speaking my language now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, The Barn. Check it out. Yeah. Maybe I'll try to watch that this week because I need to get something good in. That might be be tomorrow. Because tonight, I mean, we've got the debate. That's the greatest show. That's the real horror show. We should end this show show. early tonight. I don't want to miss (laughs) the greatest comedy of all time. (laughs) All right. So, my my turn. I'll speed speed through my hell. For the first five minutes. All yeah, right, here we do can't it. I want to hear this. I'm, I'm I watched the here. Amityville Horror. Oh, I have not seen one. this. Uh, oh, high school probably was the last time I watched this because I thought it was pretty boring when I watched it in my teenage years, and I think it's pretty boring when I watch it in my thirties. It what? this is not a great movie. It's not bad. It's not poorly made, but it is terrible, terribly slow. I mean. God, the pacing is brutal. And it has the worst ending for a horror movie I think I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I'm going to... All the things you watch, this is the worst ending you've ever seen. You know what? The worst ending of a big budget or a, a bigger horror movie that I've ever seen. There, <laughs> The ending is just nothing. Like nothing. Nothing happens. It's unbelievable. But it is well made. James Brolin is an asshole from the start, but he is a good asshole. Like he's a good actor. He really yeah. nails the intensity of his character and i didn't even know that was him to be honest i was like this dude's kind of familiar so i looked him up and i saw it was james brolin it blew my mind dude was a total freaking stud back in the day oh yeah and marco kidder is great and everything it's a shame her mental health issues i think kept her out of a lot of roles because she was a good actress and she did good work when we occasionally got to see her so i enjoyed revisiting it um even though it's not a great film it's not a terrible film and you know it's one of those every 20 years i can watch it and i'll be okay with that uh but it's definitely not one i'm putting in the queue for Dude, next time if this is your feeling with the first one you are so yeah F'd. you like are relief. i'm screwed you're gonna yeah. have yourself you, a time you, you just watched the best one <laughs> yes <laughs> oh maybe God. i do have something coming up but i i you know, it, like I said, it's not a bad movie. It really isn't. It's just, it's boring. It's just, a, it's a boring movie. And it uh, probably doesn't help that I know it's complete horseshit. Yeah. You know, like it's supposed to be this true story and it's complete garbage and mm-hmm. none of it is true. So that's probably not helping. But I was amazed at how little happens in this house. In fact, almost all the haunting stuff happens outside of the house. Uh, a hood blows up on a car. A priest gets sick. Uh, none. Something happens to her, and it's all outside of the house. Look, Almost if you feel like you're falling asleep, inside. Rod Steiger comes on the scene and just blows the crap out of the place because <laughs> his voice and just his delivery yeah. is awesome. So, so little yeah. trivia for you. Growing up, my sister's friend, they filmed this movie. They didn't film it at the actual house in Long Island. Where they did film it was next door to my sister's friend's grandmother's house, <laughs> and they like borrowed her grandmother's shovel for like one of the scenes. Wow. There we go. So that's that's a shovel six that degrees Brolin of Kevin is. Bacon for me to that movie. Threw a <laughs> shovel. <laughs> shovel may have made it uh, a little more Wait, interesting. So, so the exterior shots in this movie were filmed in Tom's River, which is my hometown. It could it, it could definitely be because her friend grandmother could have been from New Jersey. Yeah. So um, I lived like five minutes from this house growing up. So it was pretty cool. I just wa- like watching the movie just because like I know the area. And um, the inside shots were shot on in a studio in L.A. But for some reason, they got all the exterior. They wanted to film the exterior shots at the original house, but they couldn't for some reason. Oh, really? And, yeah. And so they found this house in um, downtown Tom's River to do all the uh, exterior shots. And I think all of the exterior shots in the movie are, are done in uh, Tom's River. So. Next time I'm in Tom's River, because I don't live far from there now, I'll uh, I'll take a shot of the house for you guys and send it. To I you. was at the original house, the real house, like two years ago when my car got impounded and I had to go get it down in Amityville. <laughs> but yeah, we I drove I was by surprised how tiny that house was. It's not yeah. big at all. The windows are square now. Yeah, well, naturally, you gotta take uh, that out. I would yeah, do it was, that shit first. Thing. It was. <laughs> I would just knock it down and rebuild it. 
at that point. <laughs> yeah, but didn't they uh, didn't they sell it recently? Like, wasn't it on sale like a couple years ago? Yeah, that, yeah. You could walk yeah. through it too. And I think it was like like affordable too. <laughs> like it wasn't that expensive. That's a beautiful little spot there. Yeah, you go a few blocks out, you're like, oh, but right there on the water, it's gorgeous. <laughs> So how did you like the pig in the window and all that stuff? Me? Yeah. Um, like the special effects for some of that stuff. How'd you, you know, it's from the seventies. <laughs> yeah. It was, you know, like I said, it's, it's really not a bad movie. I just, I hadn't seen it in so long and the series has been going forever. So I thought, yeah, I agree with you. I, I saw the movie in the theater and I have more of a nostalgic love of it. Like I, if I watch it, it is not, I saw it in the theater and I wasn't crazy about it. It's, I've never found it scary, but now as I'm older, I'll just watch it kind of like, oh, the Amityville Horror is on. Oh, is it the priest part with the statue or whatever? You know, mm-hmm. I'm just waiting for a certain moment. So the Red Room, all that stuff. So, yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with your, your take it's on it. It's funny because, I look, I, I agree with it's slow and stuff, but I would I, if you gave me this or The Exorcist to watch, I'm always going to watch Amityville Horror. Zero percent chance I would ever do that. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah, know why. The Exorcist I was never impressed with, even when I saw it when I first was five. Jesus. Jeez, man. Look, it's a great... I, I understand movie making. It's a great movie. Just the whole other stuff. I was like, eh, whatever. I believe in ghosts more than I believe in possession. I would watch the Critters miniseries episodes before any I of those. dare you. <laughs> <laughs> Critters 1, much better movie than the Amity Van Horror. I'm just going to say, it is. <laughs> it's crazy to say but it is <laughs> this is gonna be a rough three months for you so yeah i can't take. wait till i'm 90 and i finish this series <laughs> all right uh jack you're up next all right since i watched one of these kind of like non-traditional classic vampire movies i decided what what could quench my thirst for more blood better than the complete opposite and go with 2000, I don't know if it's 2019 or 20, Blood Vessel. I said, am I bursting it? <laughs> this raft of people uh, during World War II are stranded out in the ocean. And then a ship comes by, but it's a Nazi ship. And they manage to get themselves on board. And there's no crew, there's no nothing. Because there's vampires on the boat. Because it's <sighs> a blood vessel oh Oh, snap nazi vampires i love that there's there's like dead nazis it's a nazi ship but they are not good nazi oh it's not vampire nazis though they're not vampire nazis except Uh, maybe some nazi turned vampires you can defeat them with crucifixes or capitalism (laughs) (laughs) uh the special effects are above sci-fi channel but you're in that ballpark. Uh, the the main vampire guy has like a bat head, like he looks like like man bat from Batman or something like that. I still love that character. I like that. Um, so it's very. I thought that I think this is like a good like um, young horror movie fan who's looking for like a fun movie. Like this is like when I watched Gargoyles recently. If I was a kid and I was flicking around the channels, I would have had a ball with this movie. So. I was looking for a schlocky, low-budget vampire flick. I got it. It ain't the greatest movie in the world, but it, it craved my junk food horror fix I was looking for that night. The trailer's kind of doing it for me. Yeah, I know. I'm like yeah. really into this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got. Like I said I had fun. You might want to wait till it, you can get it without paying per view it. But it, again, if you're if you're going in knowing it's a schlocky, low-budget vampire flick, you know. Keep the I'm, bar low and you'll have fun. I'm into it. Like that trailer sold me. I'll. I think okay. I'll probably still wait, but I really want to watch that movie. Yeah, really watch that with Overlord. I thought that looked interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The um. I the watched font, a movie called. Yeah. The font when the vampire talks is like the fancy font. Oh, uh, where uh, you can't even read what it's saying. It's, it's like you know, like when you're making a PowerPoint presentation and you want to do like a Dracula thing you would like use the fancy oh god i hate those all right i went another direction i didn't go vampires i went with a movie called hoax um it starts with i guess 20 somethings out camping nothing can go wrong man 
Well, until they're all murdered by something that might be a Bigfoot. And then cut to the typical douchebag, sleazoid, like, you know, documentarian Hollywood dude. And he gathers some people together and he's going to go out and film them searching for this lost party of people out in the woods. And before long, folks start disappearing one by one. I got to tell you, here's where I, I like this movie a lot. It stars, um, oh, what's his name? Oh, that guy from X Files, Brian Thompson from X Files. He's great. Jack, do you remember when we were with him at Chiller Theater and my friend Norm and he was singing Happy Birthday to Norm's girlfriend on his phone? Maybe you weren't in the room then. I don't think I was in the room for that. It was a special moment where his handler looked like, oh, I don't have a handle on him anymore, and now he's just (laughs) off the rails. What (laughs) was he (laughs) hammered? I I guess I'm not going to say anything that he told us out of <laughs> strictest <laughs> confidence that he gave us, but it was one of the most magical 10 minutes I've ever had <laughs> at a horror convention. That I time. love him in Cobra. He is the freaking best. Oh, he is great. Adrian Barbeau is in this. Yes. For, for a little bit. She is, there's like a primatologist vet woman and she's like works in the office with her. Here's the deal. So I'm sitting here watching this movie. I'm going, oh, well, I hope it's not found footage. And thank God it's not. Hmm. (laughs) But then I'm thinking, oh, this looks like your typical crap Bigfoot thing. Stick with this because it's going to go to a place you never saw coming or thought this movie would go. And then when you're going down that weird left turn, it takes another hard left somewhere else. So just for the fact that I was like, I'm saying out loud, what the fuck? And I said it twice. That doesn't happen often. So for that, I'm like, all right, this is actually a pretty good movie. Really? I don't want to give away anything. I'll just tell you when you feel like uh, I can't watch this anymore. And I don't even think you'll get to that point because it's really not that bad. The first half. But wait, wait for the twists. I'm just surprised a Bigfoot movie that doesn't suck. Mm. I know. True. Look, it's no exists or Willow Creek, but. Exists it's still worth great. a watch. Well, you you yeah. found two of the three good Bigfoot movies there. <laughs> <laughs> there was one, and I can't remember the name of it. It's Harry and the Hendersons. Squatch. Oh. <laughs> there was one that was like there were Bigfoots attacking a cabin, but it was like aliens scooped them up at one point or something isn't weird like that. Isn't that Squatch? No, it was something. And if the cover had like there was the woods and it was like weird stalactite or something, and it was weird. I gotta find mm-hmm. it. Because that was one of the most bizarre, unsettling Bigfoot movies ever. What was the one with that guy? It was like a super soldier guy who was fighting. And at the end, he gets like recruited into fighting monsters. Oh, God. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, who shows up at the end of that? Yeah. yeah. Somebody like Lee Majors or something like that. <laughs> Lee Majors. No. Uh, Bishop from Aliens. Pumpkinhead. What the hell's his name? Oh, oh Lance Henriksen. Lance, Lance, Lance Henriksen. Yeah. He shows up and he looked as interested as he has in the last 10 years. There's another good Bigfoot movie like two years ago where the Bigfoots could like use weapons. It was doing using bows and arrows and stuff. Yeah, what was that? No, that wasn't the same one. No, no it was totally different. That was so weird. you were you are remembering a Sasquatch movie with aliens in it, and Tim also knows a separate Bigfoot movie with aliens in it. It sounded like this movie Squatch that I saw like I don't know, 15 years ago, that was really bad. And I remember just taking like, a, I don't even remember the movie that much, but I remember it took like a bizarre turn at the end. Oh, well, I feel like maybe there were aliens in it. In, in crypto, cryptozoology, there's a lot of tie-ins between Bigfoot and UFO. So it would make sense that we'll get some uh, movies with that. In looking up Squatch, I found what should be our 200th episode movie <laughs> it's from 2013 and it's called sex squatch <laughs> yes uh yeah yes! Let's do it yeah it uh there's Are a horny sex yet? squatch in it named stink fist <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's hunter shay's new nickname next week <laughs> holy crap that's my name forever <laughs> did you ghostwrite this thing <laughs> <laughs> Whew. okay i gotta watch that god damn I just uh, I just searched on IMDb Sasquatch movies, and the first thing to come up is a goofy movie. So a goofy oh, movie, like, okay. like, like Goof cool. Troop. Yeah, yeah. I don't oh. I don't get that one. I guess I guess they're they're big feet. 
Oh, that's dumb. Barnard reminded us of the Sam Elliott movie, The Man Who Killed Hitler and then The Bigfoot. Yeah. I yeah. Seen oh, that, yeah. But I've heard good things. That's an amazing movie. That's good. It it's not good. like what you think it's going to be. Yeah. I've yeah, heard play good screen. Thing. Uh, all right. I guess it's me. Um, I started, well, I'm caught up on a little show called Lovecraft Country on HBO. Ah, mm-hmm. never, heard um, never heard of it. It's, um, it's based on a book by Matt Ruff, I think the author's name is, who I actually read the book. I wasn't like a huge fan of it. Um, it was okay for me, uh, but this show is really good. Um, the first like two, three episodes are are like average, uh, but it keeps you like kind of guessing like what's going on and what the story is. Uh, it's a little bit disjointed and like every episode feels like a different story. But all the characters are the same and there is like a central uh, goal like running throughout it. But like it's very um, like I'm trying to think of another show like it, but it, it, it's like very mission based so like or quest based. So like they have to go out and do a quest like each episode um, to build towards like this this grand thing that's happening uh behind the scenes so to speak. Uh, and there's a lot of mystery and a lot of intrigue and um, but like episodes i think five and six were like some of the most insane things i've seen uh on film and really? uh yeah horror wise like i my mind was was blown <laughs> um <laughs> like some of the stuff that they showed was like i even for hbo i was like how are they even allowed to do this um but yeah it, it's really good i i really recommend it like i said it takes like like episodes five and six, I think have been the best episodes so far. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting show and um, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I think it's worth a watch. Hmm. So I watched the first three, maybe four episodes. I loved the first episode of this. Yeah. And then two and three were just okay. And right. there's like some kind of like charmed level special effects going on. And I am, I'm DVRing it, so I have them in store, but I've not felt the urge to go pl- press play yet. But I'm not deleting them. Yeah, I'm just saving them because what you just said kind of disjointed. Yeah, like, I was expecting a more co- cohesive story. Cohesive, yeah, and so it's like, I. But the book is like that too. The book is broken down. It's almost like um, it's almost like six short stories that are um that are all connected and they have like they follow different characters but the characters like weave in and out of the different stories it's it's uh it's a little odd just the way it's written um but the show is kind of exactly like that um i I don't know if you saw the episode with the house i think that was episode three where she buys the house yes yes um but like all the other characters like come into it like the book is very much like that where it's it's just kind of like fluid and there's different stories going on like that episode has great stuff in it oh dude at the end with uh the like the ghosts and like the the chick with the uh with the aborted or the the fetus that's like ripped out of her and she's just like holding it like i love that stuff jesus all right i got one yeah I don't know. I uh, I really loved it. And Jack, if you get a chance to watch episode five and six, like I <laughs> well, now I'm glad you said that. I'll I'll go back at some point. I'm not gonna like I I was like laughing and just like my jaw was dropped for for this one thing that happens. When you watch it, we'll talk about it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I I like it. I'm enjoying it. That's good my to wife. Hear. I'll, my I'll wife checked through. out at like episode three. She couldn't she couldn't do it anymore. But um. Because that's weird. Like she's not like a huge horror fan, uh, and it seems like it's more for like a wider audience, like normies. Um, but it's not. Like there's some like graphic and like very horror stuff going on in there. So well, like the first yeah. episode, there's a real like race in America in the '50s thing going on that was yeah really good, and then they put on the horror at the end. Yep. And I was like, wow, that was tremendous. And then, like, the second episode is nothing like the first one. No, that's what I mean. It's a little disjointed like the book is. But um, yeah, I think if you can get past, like, where you are now and just watch the next couple episodes. I, I don't know. I, I think six is the last one I watched. So um, I don't know. Obviously, at seven and seven, I think, was the last week. I didn't watch it yet. So I don't know if it's going to get better. Um, but the last two have been phenomenal. So I'll, I'll keep going. Keep going. Um, Brent, what do you got? 
You know what's coming. We know what he's got. Get Amityville out. 2, baby. <laughs> uh, Is that what the one with Burt Young? Yes. I That shocked the ever-living hell out of me. I <laughs> did not expect Burt Young to appear in Amityville 2 as the piece of shit father of a family that moves that into was the Amityville. Amityville who? Electric Boogaloo? Yes. Burt Young owned a restaurant by my house and bar, and he would have appeared in your kitchen if you gave him some money. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Lee Wallace wrote the screenplay? He did. Is that so the guy I gotta who wrote t- Halloween 3? I think yes. Did. did he direct it too? I feel like he did. I think he might have, yeah. I think he did. Uh, this movie is a prequel, and you know I love my prequels. You're this is master of prequels. <laughs> <laughs> very... <laughs> <laughs> very loosely based on the is it DeFeo? Is that how you say the name of the murders that happened at the house yeah. that supposedly caused Sounds the like it. or whatever? Very loosely based on that. I mean, that's being kind. Um, you know, I gotta say, this surprised me. This movie's more entertaining than Amityville One. It's not better. It is a worse movie, but it is more entertaining. This is bananas, the shit that happens in this movie. I could not. There is an incest scene like 20 minutes in and I'm like, wait, excuse me? What? (laughs) What the hell is going on in this? And right at the second incest reference. Second. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) If we do one more, we're canceled. (laughs) It's uh I mean, just when the family's moving in, you see a brother and sister in their teens, and the way they're interacting is a little weird um makes makes you a little uncomfortable and then about 20 minutes later it gets really really uncomfortable and (laughs) so in the first movie there's almost no possession stuff happening in the house it's very little in this right away paint brushes are coming out with paint on them writing messages on walls shit's blown open i mean it is out of control what is happening this is the most haunted house in any movie ever yeah and then it gets to the third act and it takes an insane left turn that just obliterates the movie and it becomes a it becomes a possession movie and it basically rips off the exorcist. And the beginning there's a lot of evil dead camera shot rip offs happening as well. Uh, but I got to tell you there was no point where I was sitting there bored out of my mind like I was at certain parts of the original Amityville. This movie is nuts. It's not great, but it is entertaining. So I I was surprised. It's been a while since I saw it, but I remember I always liked this one. Was it like, wow, really? I mean, people's skin is pulling off. Just crazy shit happens in this movie. I I was sitting here for the last half an hour. Like, what? Like, oh, this <laughs> is another, Amityville, right? Another, another true story? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely you know, a true this story. This was shot around the same time as The Evil Dead. So the camera stuff. Hmm. Yeah, but didn't they shoot The Evil Dead for like three or four years? I don't know. I, I'm telling you, there is a shot in this that I'm like, son, that is the evil dead. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that in the theater and you went straight to set and shot that shit. <laughs> All right. You can, you can emulate more stuff. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it again, it made it entertaining. There was more stuff happening. So, you know, uh, it's, it's not great. But if you're looking for something crazy to watch, you could do worse. Uh, blew me away. Honestly, I was super surprised. The thing is, you've just been watching such a dreck. <laughs> now it's like as somebody who's like been eating bugs and garbage. <laughs> it's like, oh, awesome! I got to eat a rotten apple today. <laughs> it's it's true. I've been eating shit sandwiches for like eight months now. <laughs> oh my god! Or boiled peanuts and that can of Vienna sausages we ate, Jack. Oh god! <laughs> All right, Jack, what you got? All right, I'm going to end with a high note. I um I needed something because we're heading into Halloween season, so I watched The Fly from uh, 1986. Oh, fine choice. Gold Bloom, baby. Awesome. It's been a long time since I've watched this movie. I love this movie, but I haven't seen it in so long that I forgot a lot of stuff. I'm so happy I went back. This really is one of the best horror movies. Probably the bet my probably my favorite Cronenberg movie. Yep. The pods are brilliant. The way they look and the way that the light shines through them, so you you can't see what's coming out of them with the smoke and everything, creating the drama every time they open. Goldblum is perfectly cast as this eccentric 
scientist Gina Davis. Is that her name? She's awesome in this yeah. too. Uh, and th- I mean, a lot does not happen. Like you were interested the whole time, but it really doesn't get cooking till about halfway through. Um, but for transformation wise and all that kind of stuff, but you are never bored in this movie because the story is so good, the characters are so good, and then it just gets Cronenbergy the further you get into it. So if you haven't seen this in a while or you've never seen this, this is probably the best remake, like at least of the Universal. The Fly was Universal, wasn't it? No. Mm-hmm. But, okay. Well, that era. Um, you know when you talk about the thing. The fly, like the, these are the best like remakes. It was like the recent Invisible Man took a page out of this, where you took the concept of something, reinvented it, and created something amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, where do you guys stand on this movie? I'm sure you all love it. Oh, it's amazing! I love it. I actually watched it recently, and I just it's one of, I could watch it a thousand times. Like it's so perfect. Yeah, I was saving it's- for Horror Tober. I was going to do this in the original back to back. It's fine. <laughs> no, I, I adore this movie. <laughs> like, what the hell I is going on? Ready tonight? to punch my screen. <laughs> Jesus. You know I what? I'm, I'm with you, Jack. I actually haven't watched it in a while now. I don't know why I haven't revisited. I should maybe do that this month. It's so worth it. The arm wrestling scene always. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I don't know why that shit just irks me, man. It's so. Ugh. Goldblum's arc is so great. Because really like, he is he, once he get he goes through that machine, it's a it, it's a superhero story in reverse, like body horror. You know, when Peter Parker gets bit by a spider, he he's discovering his powers and it's positive. When when he gets the fly thing, it's negative and it's oh, it's wow. an amazing journey and his personality and him kind of trying to fight it while embracing it and all that. It's, it's just so good. He was perfectly cast. My God. And he's been that character now for 35 years. <laughs> it works. I said, you got to watch this and then Ragnarok back to back. <laughs> just see like. <laughs> and then Jurassic Park 2. Yeah. Yeah. I think I will. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Shay. I ended with a book by, I'm sure we all know, Terry M. West. Mm, oh, good guy. Terry. Our main man. Did you guys like uh, that movie, uh, Shaun of the Dead? Did you like it at all? Uh, a little bit. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> now, when you finish that movie, years later, you think, wow, I wish there was a book I could read that takes me kind of into that kind of realm. Go yes. on. This is the book. It's called The Plumbers by Terry M. West. <laughs> 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 Spit take. Uh, the book is actually coming out. I think it's coming out Halloween, but I got an advanced copy. Ooh. So this book, it all takes place in one day, and we've already established that there's this weird sickness that's gone on, that uh, it's, the virus is called the crud, which is basically turning people into zombies, which they call plaguers. So it's these two buddies who are plumbers, Liam and Pierce, and they go to do a little plumbing at this kind of out-of-the-way uh, mansion, and things get really weird and funny hmm. it's the relationship between these two guys and by the way the way terry wrote this you would swear that he is not from america like really yeah it was incredible i mean he had just from dealing with a lot of people from that area in business he had it nailed how they all talk to each other and all the different colloquialisms that they have i, hmm. I was really blown away but i love these two guys and the whole time I'm going, yeah, this is like Shaun of the Dead, but this is, you know, just another spot where it happened somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's awesome. I, uh, I've i seen him promoting it, and I definitely want to check it out. So, Yeah, it's a short novella. I mean, I wish it was longer, but I'm hoping that there's going to be more. And knowing Terry, there will be. Yeah. Cool. To check it out. Yeah, that the sounds cool. Numbers. I like it. Uh, I also have a book recommendation, although I listened to it on audio. It is uh, a book that was published, I think, in 1991. It's called The Cipher by Kathy Koja. Mm, I never read that. Uh-uh. This book is phenomenal, you guys. It is. You talked. It's funny that Jack brought up um, The Fly because it, it has like that 
type of feeling to it. It's um, basically about this guy. He lives in this uh, this really shitty apartment complex. And um, he's kind of seeing this this girl that's a little weird. And they find a, uh, a black hole in like this common room of their apartment complex. And um, uh, basically, they just kind of start experimenting with it. It's called the fun hole. It's referred to throughout the whole uh, mm. throughout the whole book. Um, and so they <laughs> they start uh, experimenting with it and like putting stuff in it, and it kind of mm. had like a um, like a House of Leaves started, <laughs> a House of Leaves vibe to it, um, where they're just kind of like playing around this black hole, and uh, things just start to get crazy, and um, just how how the whole reacts uh, to certain things, um, and then like they're progression like their relationship and then other people get brought into <laughs> it and uh it, it's it's wild it's a wild book and uh i definitely recommend it i think it was out of print for a long time um and it just came back into print if i'm not mistaken like a couple of weeks ago uh, i forget the, ah, i forget the press that was putting it out but um definitely worth it and the audio was actually really uh well done too i think crossroads put it out so um yeah definitely check it out if you're if you're into like a Cronenberg Cronenberg esque um, horror movie, read it when you're ensconced in your own fun hole. Yeah, what what things were they putting in the fun hole? Uh, first, they started with um, like bugs. <laughs> <laughs> they put bugs in there just to see how like what would it would do. Then they put like a mouse gerbil? in there. No gerbils. No, um, play, I think a rabbit at one point. But it, it really hole. it really they pull started. a rabbit out of the fun hole. <laughs> It really starts when he puts his hand in the fun hole, like uh, his whole hand. He gets it in there. Wow, this Fisty sounds like my story on cryptids coffee and <laughs> <laughs> like my Times Square. Story. Um, just just to reiterate, it's a black hole in the ground and not somebody else's fun hole. Just to clarify, uh, you guys, you guys seem a little. And I'm not weird. watching this movie. It's not a movie. <laughs> 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 Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> uh, just, oh, just to clarify, just to clarify. It's, you know, I feel like I should just chop up your little review there and just take out a couple words, and people think you uh, watched a porn very easily. You have God to. damn it! God damn it! You guys, I, I should do that. Did it to yourself. <laughs> a fun hole. All right. Um, yeah, we have a. We that's it, right? Everybody's yeah. done. I'm good. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, Because we have to get to our main feature because we have to watch two old guys beat each other up on national TV. It's going to be awesome. So let's get to it. Let's get to the... uh... Three minutes. You like scary movies? Uh Uh-huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. You have to have a favorite. What comes to mind? Oh, all right. So, um, Jack, you want to give us a quick rundown on what this movie is about? Two gay guys and one gay guy's daughter move to the sticks where they encounter prejudice and weird behavior and possibly supernatural stuff. It all kind of spirals out of control, if you will. Oh, mm. oh. that's it. Wow. I oh, like wow. that. So just to get it out of the way, uh, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I don't know. I, what did you guys think? Jason, you go first. I want to hear what you, what you thought of it. Well, I was a little concerned at the beginning that this was going to go down just like a woke fest, which can be very annoying in movies to me because I don't like being preached at. But I felt like it straddled that really well. And by the time the credits rolled, I kind of loved it. I I really enjoyed this movie. And I, I'm not going to lie, but halfway through, I was thinking... Mm, this could either be well done or this could be not very well done, depending on the direction the story goes. And it yeah. went the direction that I was hoping and uh, I was quite happy. Yeah, it definitely took some turns that we'll get into later that I was I was really impressed with and surprised by. But um, Jack, what did you think of it? I thought it was fine, but I didn't love it. I thought it was a little bit meandering for a while. But I thought the ending was really good, and I wish they had given me a little bit more with how they finished it during the movie. I thought it kind of took a while to get there. However, it was good performances, and there was 
there was a lot to like about it. But like I said, I just I thought it was okay, but I didn't like love it. Interesting, interesting. Uh, Hunter, what did you think of it? Well, of the four of us, I'm the only one with adult children, and my oldest is gay. So I was actually really psyched to see this handled this way in a horror movie. Ten years ago, you would never see this. Like, how far things have advanced is Mm. pretty amazing. And I want to get to the next ten years where you can have a movie with a gay couple where it's really not about them being gay. It's just about Agreed. them being a couple and yeah. who gives a shit about. Um, so I was like, I was the same way with you, Jason. Like, this, this this turns into like a whole woke thing. You can put me back to fucking sleep because it yeah. starts to get irritating after a while. But I think they handled it very deftly. And, you know, I recall, you know, my friends at this, because this was set in the 90s, who were dealing with this kind of crap too. And so I felt the pathos of that. I liked that part of the movie. The horror part, I thought, was just so. I I didn't like the horror part at all. In fact, you could have just taken all that out. I would. I would. At that point, I would have liked just deal with the social commentary of it. Um. So to me, it was like two. It was just trying to. It had a very heavy, big thing, and then it had this kind of light and airy horror thing. So it didn't work for me as a horror movie. It's a very well-made movie and the performances are great. And I love that the fact that this is out there and it's on shutter. So I do encourage people to watch it. If yeah. The representation it, of, of gay people. And this was great. They mm-hmm. presented it well. And uh, I thought that it was important to the plot and it wasn't heavy handed or anything like that. I, I agree with you. I think they handled that very deftly. Yeah. I, I was concerned. There was a, a little montage, I don't know, 20 minutes in or something. There were a couple of shots in there. I was like, oh, yes. God, here we go. And then it just that faded away, and I was okay again. But I was thinking, we got another Black Christmas on our hands. God damn I, it. I, I kept wondering, though, too. I, I have a lot of very close gay friends, so I, I may be exposed to the culture a little bit more than other straight white guys are. Mm-hmm. So I wondered, like, people who don't, have anybody in their life are they how uncomfortable were they made by this movie because it because i think you're right i agree with you on that but also i just wonder like there's going to be some people who just are going to it's going to they're, they're going to get turned off by the first immediately kiss, they're out they're yeah out. yeah but you know this was this to me is an important step forward yeah in the way that it's rep- represented in cinema you know where it's so I think it's in that sense, it's an important movie. Just, just as a horror movie, I was less than enthused. Hmm. That's even by the end. Yeah, I didn't care anymore. Really? <laughs> now it's one of those ones I was just like. All right, I see, I thought the, it was. The, I I didn't I see. It wasn't heavy on horror. Like it wasn't like super gory or like it wasn't like a like a slasher or anything. But uh, I thought it it had like a cool mystery throughout the whole thing and you're trying to figure out kind of like what was going on here like what are these people what are they doing and i uh i enjoyed that aspect of it i it's not like a, a typical horror movie not a lot of the stuff that you typically see on shutter um but it, i thought it had like a cool like little mystery oh wait can, we should also point out they weren't just gay they were interracial true yeah true so i mean I forgot about that part too, but yeah. This is- Honestly, it didn't even occur to me while I was watching. Yeah, Actually, when when the said. neighbor comes over and introduces herself to the, like, the, the, all the things that that community might disapprove, she sort of like acknowledges in in like a two minute introduction. Yeah. To that. We don't have did, any of you in the town. Did it say where this was supposed to take place? Because I, I, it looked like Appalachia at the beginning when they were going through like over a bridge and stuff. And then there are other shots where I thought I saw water, almost like a swampy area. I couldn't tell where it was supposed to be. I feel like they said it, but I don't remember. I don't recall. Hmm. I don't know. I was tense. There was a scene when uh, Malik is jogging through the town. I was just tense for him. Yeah. And not just him to when, when i see that when like all right you're the only man of color running through this very white town and you really you already know that you're pretty sure they don't want you there i was like oh man just keep running Get the highway and just keep running you can find another guy <laughs> that old man saddled with that kid 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. I uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a, a good flick. And then, um, you know, I don't know if you want to do spoilers now. Sure. Might as well. <laughs> Four minutes Spiral in, spoiler. spoiler. This is the shortest review for a movie ever, but we're all like, we have to watch yeah. two old guys fight. We- <laughs> <laughs> There's a uh, fight happening at the senior citizen home down the street. <laughs> the vanilla thriller is on. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I oh man, that scene with the daughter at the end, I was like, I was blown away by that. Like, I did not see that coming, did not expect that. And I think that like that just like, was an extra like the movie was already good, and I already would have liked it even without that, but that was just like the icing on the cake for me. I yeah. did think. Did I just see that? <laughs> I didn't think that really happened. And they went back to yeah. the pool. Dude was just eating her guts. Yeah. Hmm. It's like, holy I mean, shit. they hinted they had the, the ghost girl thing happen mm. a couple of times. And that was hit or miss. Mm. Yeah, and, I wasn't a huge fan of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, but then when the ending happened, I was like, oh, here we go. This is fun. Yeah. Uh, and then I was kind of like, and uh, Tim, I get what you're saying. Like it, it holds back. So there's a mystery and what the hell is going on. So maybe if they had shown a little bit more of that, these are supernatural creatures, it would have ruined the ending. Yeah. But at the same time, I was kind of like, I don't know. I just felt like there could have been a little more meat on the bone earlier in the movie somehow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they definitely could have structured it a little bit better. Um, but like layered that in there a little bit better. I mean, that's a good critique that I, I kind of agree with. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know. I guess I'm like just your average dumb movie watcher. <laughs> where like it's like a, rich, rich average movie. average movie and then blow me away at the end and like I'm good, which is why like yeah. I'm like the the biggest Shyamalan fan. I love every almost almost everything that he's done because it's like you know, a lot of times it's just like an average movie and then like the end <laughs> like holy shit. Right. If the beginning had been good and the ending sucked, we would have been killing this movie but instead yeah. you're like oh yeah i really like the ending on this so yeah, yeah you a, should check it out i'm an average dumb movie goer there's nothing wrong I, with that i yeah. thought from the very beginning that it was just going to be a movie about this dude losing his mind yeah yeah it kind of was yeah. that in a little yeah way. that's completely what they were trying to make you think and i kind of figured that's why it's called spiral mm-hmm. you know he's just he's losing it and then there was a shot with the daughter and her guy she's trying to cheat on her boyfriend with (laughs) uh they're at a bridge and a dude is at the end and starts running at them and they're kind of weirded out and they drive away which i I don't really understand that yeah Um, i agree i don't know if they were just trying to freak her out but when they showed that i thought okay this is not from the main character's perspective so if there's weird shit going on and this is a movie about him losing his mind that is really bad filmmaking Mm. i felt that somebody had described this movie as the gay get out and I felt that that mm. was the get out moment that they were going for. Oh, mm. maybe. So See, I, anyway, I, I, when they ended up showing that he was he was losing it because they were changing his drugs, but there was stuff going on. I was like, yes. Yeah. So all the stuff I was picking up on that I thought is either going to be shitty filmmaking or good storytelling ended up being good storytelling. So I was OK with that. I will a little bit of comedy and there's not much comedy in this movie. No, the, uh, the girl doing the yoga. When she looked between her legs, me and my wife looked at each other and went, Jack! <laughs> <laughs> I have a few screen grabs of that. Let me just get them for you. <laughs> that was an intense move. I was like, Jesus Christ, what is her spine made out of? Jesus. Happy? Um, yeah. Um, you know what I like? The uh, well, I love like I know I, I got a whole Rorschach's journal vibe from the way that that movie ended. Mm. Uh, so I thought that was kind of that was kind of fun. Yeah, I didn't understand it the first time I I watched it. I was like, wait, he was just in a jail cell, and now he he's like out doing all this stuff. But then I realized that it it he was doing that the entire time, and that was just them showing it to you at the end. It's a flashback, bro. Yeah, I didn't catch that the first time I, I saw it. So I love the old tech. That computer was like, yeah, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> That computer, did you see when he wanted to go to a website? He just typed in the address. He was there immediately. I'm like, that did not happen in the nope. 90s ever. It was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a slow progression. 
but whatever yeah. we're, we're allowed to let that one slide yeah, yeah. The, the tech was neat and i like the passing of the the knowledge on to the next people i thought that was i thought that was a neat story idea i thought the acting was really good too i mean sometimes a lot of these low budget movies like they the acting in it can literally make or break the movie for you and i thought the all the actors did a phenomenal job i had that one guy who was like in all the marl the the wayne's brothers movies mm -hmm. he played like the bad guy um yeah. I thought that father was from Riverdale. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's in a he's in a I think was he in like the scary movies or one, at least one of them. He's in a ton of stuff. Yeah. But uh yeah, I don't know. I uh I enjoyed it. I enjoyed but, it. The two leads I thought were great. Like you could feel yeah. you could feel that relationship and that chemistry between them. Yeah. Which was really um cool. I do want to say this did have <laughs> something that i was like okay this whole movie could be solved if you would just tell your husband what's happening like somebody somebody didn't spray paint on the outside of your house they spray painted on the inside of your house yeah this is a much bigger deal yeah but and i i think he didn't tell him that because he didn't want to like i think he he said later why he didn't he didn't he did, and it was stupid somebody's breaking into your house like there's yeah. You don't yeah, keep that I a secret. It like, <laughs> it's good to see gay couples are just as dumb as straight couples. Yeah. <laughs> so th there were a couple of things like that where shit kept happening. He installed an alarm system, did not tell him. You know, yeah. maybe That's... maybe bring that up. <laughs> did the guy not notice the alarm panel? <laughs> I said the same thing. On the wall and the guy's oblivious as shit. <laughs> yeah, really? He wasn't it's there going... that much, I guess. Yeah, I think he was stopping by the bar on the way home or something yeah. because he was clueless the entire movie. And but I yeah, love, I love that Tim's are... defending him. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 he's not there. Listen, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to defend the writers of this movie because I really liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely one of those things. Maybe bring up to people that uh, someone's running around your house. Yeah. But what I what I meant by Rorschach's journal is at the end, end of Watchmen, he's dead, but he's written everything down to yeah uh, to pass it on, and this this kind of did the same thing. And I thought that yeah, uh, like Chad just said in the chat. It's you know it the whole thing is about minorities, yeah. They've been using you know it. it's just like what decade are we in, and who's the big target this, yeah. this time around? Right. Which I yeah. thought was a cool thing. I mean, it was kind of like a I guess a little bit get out ish, um, but yeah, I thought that was a cool little little twist at the end. Yeah, it was a little. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it was another one where I was like, oh, we're walking a line, but it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway bottom line worth checking out i think good shutter flick this is a did they give it give us movies of this caliber i'm very happy yeah I, yeah i agree even though i didn't like it as a horror movie i think it's a movie worth watching four bucks a month for movies like this i will be very pleased yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> i wish uh, more could be like this absolutely so uh do we have anything else done Next week's movie what is next week's movie? It's Vampires versus the Bronx on Netflix. <laughs> and I Jeez. will tell you, as born and raised in the Bronx, the Bronx is going to win, motherfuckers. Depends on what vampires. kind of vampires we get. Do we get like 30 Days of Night vampires? Do we Doesn't get matter. like the vampire from Brooklyn? Get, look, oh, Ooh, vampire Brooklyn versus the <laughs> Bronx. It'd be a <laughs> pretty fight. cool, yeah. Eddie like, Murphy shows up. <laughs> have hepatitis C if that would be... Blood <laughs> They could do like the warriors, but they're vampires. They got to get through every yeah. borough. Yeah, that we should make that happen. Vampires come out and play. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys. It's been a it's been a real pleasure chatting movies with you. It has, but as, as always, always, I have to watch yes. a big orange ball. Make horror Beat great again. To make an old man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Adios. Game over, man.